in the throat. You say, why? Who knows why? Because we're not in heaven yet. We're not home yet. Things are going to happen to every one of us. Being saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, and speaking in tongues four or five hours a day and memorizing Scripture will not keep you from the tragedies of life. You're going to have to learn that this is a war and we are fighting a battle. This is life. This is real stuff. This is down to earth. You can't confess it away. You can't listen to motivational speakers who get you to dip your head under and, realize, and, and think that nothing ever except what you want is going to happen. In fact, folks, let me just tell you right now, the church is in a plague, and, and it shouldn't be this way. For years and years, we've listened to even preachers, preachers, tell people to dream big. And we've dreamed so big that we've lived out there rather than right here. Dream big. Go for it. Do what you've always wanted to do. And most people don't know what they want to do. They just know they don't want to be here doing this. And what happens? People who aren't satisfied in Christ. People who aren't fulfilled in Jesus will quit their jobs with family to feed and bills to pay and try to live the dream. They pursue it. It's what I've always wanted. Now I know three weeks ago I told you this little story but I'm going to tell it again because surely everybody didn't hear it. At the other church when Centra was a lot younger there was a very capable police officer who started attending our church he could sing he could a witness he was he was quite a fella and he came to talk to me one day and he said pastor i witnessed to no less than a dozen criminals every day i put them in the back of my car they're in cuffs they cannot get out and i tell them about jesus he said, but I want you to help me with something. I want to get in the ministry. So I'm going to quit my job, and I want a church to pastor so I can be in the ministry. And I said, are you kidding me? You will witness to more people in a week than you will probably win to Jesus in a year. What is wrong? And see... And that's what I have to deal with a lot. People saying, I want to be in the ministry. What they mean is I want to stand behind a pulpit and preach. Folks, this is not glamorous stuff. This is, the, this is the cute part of it right here. No. Ministry is living out there. Living with them. And letting your light shine in front of them. Ministry is walking it out, fleshing it out. <clears throat> Ministry is saying, my life's all to pieces too. But thank God, Jesus is going to take care of me. It may be this way now, but it won't always be this way because God is going to take care of me. And then I hear people say often, well, I'm going to quit my job anyway, Pastor, because most of the time people don't listen to you. Haven't you noticed that? <laughs> Their minds are already made up. I just let them talk, and then I say, whatever, you know, I'll be praying for you here, yeah, right? <laughs> but, but, but when they say this, but Pastor God will provide. Okay, that's great. And then they start a journey of their own making. And I want to say to you this morning, if you're one of those people, hear me well. God never finances foolishness. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> and once a person says, God told me, I'm done. There's no advice to be given. They don't need consultation. They don't need revelation. God told me. 
They don't even need my opinion anymore. God told me to do this. God bless you. Go do it. But then I hear, can I get some money from the church to do it? God told me to start a church, Pastor. Great. But I need for the church to support me. Really. God told me to start a church, plant a church. And I'm going to send out 500 letters and ask people to financially contribute to this. Are you kidding me? See, I don't think that way. I guess I not, thought I'd never say it this way. I'm from the old school. If God told you to do it, God will help you do it. And you don't need to go around with your hat in your hand saying, help me do what God is calling me to do. When Sandra and I, here we go, when Sandra and I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina to begin in this church, we could not buy groceries. We could not pay bills. The money was so little that she cried about as much as she cries now. We had a new baby. We had to... And how long did we pay for Anna, Sandra? Years? That's when the hospital would let you make payments on your baby. Well, we made payments on the baby. Then we went by faith and bought a dresser for the baby's clothes and paid on that for two years, three years, something like that. It was terrible. If it hadn't been for our parents, we wouldn't have eaten. I'm just going to tell you how it is. Happy New Year. <laughs> I remember one time we had struggled so long, and I'm not kidding you, but we never asked anybody for a dime. I never asked for personal help. I said, God called me here, and God will take care of me. And I remember one time after three years, the men of the church got together and decided to give me a raise and pay our utilities and half of our social security. They uh, announced that to me on a Sunday night. And uh, Sandra had already gone home with the kids. And I went home and told her, and you talk about shouting. Lord, have mercy. If we'd been drinkers, we'd have been slop dead drunk that night. Hallelujah. We can go to Dairy Queen. It was the most wonderful, euphoric feeling we had ever had. And three days later, on Wednesday night, after church, they called another meeting and took it all back. <laughs> True. Took every penny of it back. Because one of the men said, I don't know. He wasn't in the first meeting. He got a little skittish. He said, I don't know about this. They took it all back. I had a choice to make. I could be bitter. I could stomp my foot and say, I don't need you. I could go around asking people for financial help. It's tough to watch your wife cry. Or I could say, God called me here. And when God calls you, God will take care of you. I never asked for help. We stayed. They're gone. Life is good. God is faithful. And I'm telling you today, if God is in it, God will take care of you.